straight to me. All right, so let me share my desktop here quickly. All right, so I'm uh, gonna talk about the new team development. Uh, and I'm, I'm starting off here with a, a pretty empty workspace. I've got, this is, a, a, for example, if you've just provisioned a workspace, I'm going to show you what you see when you first come in. Team development sits in the same exact position it was before. It's just simplified and, and kind of foreshortened. We, we tried to make things a little easier, uh, you know, fewer knobs to twist and turn uh, so that it's a, a more straightforward experience for you. When you first go into team development in a, in, a, in a portion workspace, the very, very first time, you'll see a welcome uh, screen to say, hey, we can set up some sample data for you if you want to kind of show you how to use this. This is a direction we're trying to go in in a lot of different ways, uh, in a lot of different sections in, in, in Apex to, to try to make the experience a little bit easier for everyone. So uh, Apex team development, we kind of reimagined it to work a little bit better. It's more conversational, uh, less fragmented, uh, and it, it basically uses the idea of an issue and then classifications on those on the on the issue itself by doing things like adding labels to it and adding milestones to it, et cetera. So here we can uh, see that we can install a set of sample labels, a set of sample templates, uh, a set of sample milestones, choose whether to install those or not. And if you're running multilingual, you can choose which language to install those things in. Uh, for, for the sample labels, the labels are used to classify an issue. We'll see that in just a second. Templates are uh, quick fill uh, items for when you're creating an issue, kind of a template, or when you're responding or commenting on an issue, you can uh, template those responses as well. So let's go ahead and leave all those selected. And uh, we can also, um, uh, when, the, when this gets created, it will automatically create a sample issue for us as well that kind of shows you exactly what's, uh, what you can do with the issue section. Um, right away, you can see that the issue is set up in, in such a way that you can kind of see what the issue is, the issue number, when it was open, who it was open by. And as you go through, we'll see that as we add classifications to it or, or uh, labels or uh, milestones, et cetera, uh, these, will be, these will show up on this, uh, this home page as well. You not only have this cards view, but you can actually go to the data view of this as well and filter just like you would with any, any normal interactive grid. Uh, before I drill down into the issue itself, I want to go to the individual items that you can control. We've got the ability to manage the labels, and labels are grouped into label groups. Uh, the default or the, the uh, sample data that we've loaded here kind of breaks things down into several different groups. You've got categories, functional areas, important level of importance, level of effort, and progress. You can see three of these have little stars beside them. That means that these groups are exclusive. Exclusive groups means that only one label from this group can be assigned to any issue at a given time. So they, uh, if you assign one and then assign another from the group, it'll replace the one that's there. So let's, let's have a quick look at, for instance, uh, the level of importance. You can see that we've got uh, a set of, of levels, the order in which we want them to display. Uh, each group itself can be assigned a color so that it shows up uh, uh, in that color and every label within that group will show up in that same color. You can decide whether a group is exclusive or not here and give it a, a, a the group a name. From uh, milestones, these are just important dates that you get uh, or, or that you can use to track uh, issues if you, if you want. Um, you can set a date for that and each, uh, each milestone tracks what things are assigned to it and whether it's opened or closed against that. Um, dates that are within two weeks show up as yellow, dates that are past show up as red, uh, and dates that are further out than two weeks will, will show up just as a normal uh, item here or in the issues report, they actually show up as green. Uh, we talked about uh, templates as well. Um, you have two different types of templates for creating issues and for responding to issues. Uh, as with anything in, in team development, anytime you do a, uh, a comment, uh, you can use markdown syntax to set that up. Uh, you can, by, by all means, you can just use standard text, but markdown is supported here. And you can see here that you've got uh, you know, the, a preview of that as well for, for your templates. 
templates here can be uh, assigned to either an issue or response. This dictates where it shows up. Um, so we'll we'll see when we create a new issue that, it, that the only the uh, the issue templates will show up in that set. All right. For now, if we go back to uh, to the issues, we can see that we have this issue that was created. If we click on it, it will take us to what we call the issue timeline. The issue timeline shows from uh, the beginning to the end of time, from basically least recent to most recent at the bottom, the things that have happened to this. The example issue that we created is, is pretty big, but we do that to show you all the different types of things that you can do with Markdown, including tables, lists, code, uh, um, uh, uh, quotes, and, and, and indented uh, text as well. Um, as we go through this, we can do things from either the actions menu, for instance, if you're the owner or an admin, you can edit the title or edit the issue text. Uh, you can, from here, you can set assignees, uh, set labels, set milestones. You can associate a, an issue with an app and a page. You can mark it as duplicate of another. Uh, if you're the owner or an admin, you can delete it or you can close the issue as well. Uh, we have the quick picks on the side here as well to be able to assign issues or uh, issues to uh, people, create a, a labels or, uh, sorry, assign labels to it or assign milestones to it. Let's do some assignees first. I'm going to uh, assign uh, Hillary and Christian to this. Uh, and I apply it and immediately you can see that that refreshes and I see those, uh, those uh, assignees here. But also at the bottom of this, it gives me an event that says that I assigned Christian and Hillary uh, to this issue one second ago. So it keeps track of all the events that happen in here. Let's do some labels. Let's say that this is a, an enhancement request for the UI, uh, and it is of normal importance, and it's going to be a moderate level of effort. We aren't going to say any progress on here. I can see the difference between inclusive, I could choose many of these, or exclusive, I can only choose one of these. Uh, uh, th these are the different types of groups. And as you define groups, if you want to change these, you can go change these in the back end. You can uh, add more groups, and they'll show up automatically in this set. Once again, if I apply the changes here, it automatically refreshes. It automatically shows the event down at the bottom to see that I actually added those things. So you can see a record over time of how they were classified, when they were added, when they were removed from certain classifications, et cetera. Again, with milestones, the same thing. You can see uh, the, the milestones that are here. By default, we only show milestones that have a status of open, but you can actually show closed milestones as well if you want to and assign things to that. Um, I'm going to assign it to a UI freeze and apply. Again, the UI freeze is farther than two weeks out, so it appears as green. And this code freeze is less than two weeks, so it shows as yellow. If there was one that had already passed, it would show up as red. All these events come down at the bottom. Again, we can, uh, we can make a, uh, a comment at the bottom, and here is where you can select the templates for the comment. Let's say that this is a known issue. We can say that it's uh, in bug DB. The bug ID is, and the URL to the bug is, is uh, you know, something like this. And since I'm not going to add any comments, I can delete that. I can also add an attachment, and I can either just drop something here, or I can choose a file. Uh, let me let me choose a file real quick. And I will uh, choose an image file. Uh, let's just do a painting, whatever it is. It uploads it, and it automatically puts a reference, a Markdown style reference, into this. So when I preview it, I can. Uh, oh, that should work. I should be able to see that um, as a preview. Uh, but when I comment it, it will definitely show up, and so I can see the item in there. Uh, other things that you can do, um, you can see the little three dots here. If you are an admin or an owner, I can edit the, uh, the text of something, whether it be the issue or the text of a comment, if I'm the owner of it. If I'm an admin, I can hide a comment. This may be if the comment is no longer relevant or if it was inappropriate. As an admin uh, can go and hide that comment. And it shows up that, uh, uh, that this uh, comment has been hidden. 
I can see, I, if I'm an admin, I can explode what was hidden and dis, dis, display it again, or I can go back and unhide it as well, now that I've got that. Um, another thing that is uh, uh, interesting here is that owners, assignees, or subscribers can get notifications about the things that they're interested in. If I go up to the top and look at the, uh, the notifications button, that takes me to my profile and shows me all the notifications that, uh, that have been uh, created for the things that I am interested in. The very, very first time that you either create something or assign to something or subscribe to something, you are basically subscribed to everything. So if you wanna alter that, you have to go into your notification preferences and say, okay, you know, I really don't wanna receive emails, I just wanna see it here in the UI. I'm only interested in, let me get rid of everything else, I'm only interested in uh, new comments and a status change. So this will only, uh, once this is set, anything new that shows up here will only be the things that you're interested in. If you've got it set to email you, it'll email you either immediately, hourly, or daily summaries. But it'll only, interest, only email you when the things you're, you've decided that you're interested in actually happen. Another thing that you can do is over here in the same uh, section, in the issue section, you can see all the issues that either you own, you are assigned to, or you're subscribed to. So there you can see uh, things like the labels that were added to it, the milestones that were added, the people that are assigned to it, and the number of comments against that. And that will also show up at the main level, same kind of thing. You can drill down on any of this stuff. Clicking on the title will take you to the uh, timeline. Clicking on the owner will take you to their specific list so you can see the items that they're listed in. If it's another user, for instance, let's go back to this and I look at uh, uh, Christian. I won't be able to see or control the way that he gets notifications. I won't be able to see his notifications, but I do get to see the things that he is either assigned to, owns, or subscribed to. Hey, hey, Doug, sorry, this is Joel. We probably need to conclude this in a minute, if you don't mind, please. Yeah, sure, I got one more section, basically. Um, utilities, there are two, uh, there's a, a set of utilities that allow you to manage certain things, manage the deleted issues. Uh, 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 when you delete an issue, it doesn't get deleted permanently. You can go back and, and restore it. Uh, you can do things like view files, purge some of the data, update assignees and whatnot. Some of these are only available to workspace admins. Others are available to everyone. Things like uh, um, managing milestones, templates, labels, uh, and viewing files. That's available to everybody. Hopefully, this is a you know a fairly straightforward process. It's uh, it's not very complex. There's a lot of stuff that goes on behind the scenes, but the user interface was designed to be as easily uh, to use as possible. So that's it. Thanks. and I'm trying to find the stop share. There we go. And over to Anthony.